pot full of pots productions presents cool dude clem's electronic workshop with me your host cool dude clem my homemade amplifier is looking a little sorry for itself but there is a reason for that because i'm going to replace all of these potentiometers these are all single potentiometers and i'm going to change them to double potentiometers because when I ordered these parts originally I didn't know if these were single or double ones so I just took my chances and ordered them anyway so in this video I'm gonna change these all to double ones got some nice knobs as well I like the retro style of these knobs I think they look pretty good and here is one of the new potentiometers with a very long shaft on it. In fact, they all have very long shafts. So what I'm going to do is cut the excess off that I don't need. This is the face plate of the amplifier. This is the backing plate that the potentiometers are on. So instead of the knob being here, it's going to be there, flush with the face plate. I've already marked how much I need to cut off. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, so I'm just going to get on with that. Cut these three down to size. And see where we go from there I've trimmed these potentiometers to size I know you can still see a little bit of the spindle hanging out over the edge there but remember there's gonna be a bit sort of right like that so it's not gonna be a problem anyway next thing I've got to do is wire these all up we've got treble control with that weird squiggly thing that I just cannot draw to save my life bass and volume I'm gonna get on with that right now and lo it is built this is the volume control, this is the bass control, and this is the treble control. And if we take a look at the other side, you can see a lot of messy point-to-point -point wiring, but, you know, that's just the way I do things around here. Anyway, I've attached the preamp board to it as well, so uh, we're pretty much all good to go. So we're going to give it a little test here. Got 12 volts coming in through this wire here, which goes down to a wall watt supply. And I've got the output of this tape deck connected to the input of this thing with the tape all queued up and ready to play. And the output of this thing is going into this little radio transmitter here, this little FM transmitter, and we're going to hear it on there. The only trouble I might have with this thing is, as you can see, we've got point-to-point -point wiring here, which is not... There is a risk of some of these wires coming together and causing a short circuit, but it seems pretty stiff, so um. Just going to take the risk with that. So let's hear how it sounds. Here's the volume control. Let's just spin this on a bit to where it gets going. I'm sure some of you recognize that song already. And this is, I actually did this, a chip tune of Still Alive. This is my rendition of it. Let's adjust the treble. That's all the way down. That's all the way up. And now for the bass. Yeah, well, I can't really hear much of a bass change through those little speakers there. It's kind of beyond... Beyond the range of what they can handle. But I must say that's working pretty good. Now all I've got to do is put it in my amplifier here, but I've got a few more things I want to do to this. I want to tidy up all this messy wiring we've got here. Don't know what that's doing in there. That's not part of it. And then... Put it all together. And then... I don't know. Right, well, this thing is certainly looking more like its old self now. As you can see, I've put the front bit back on with the knobs on it. We've got the volume knob, 
bass and treble making sure nothing's short circuiting got the selector knob back in switches as well I don't know if I've put those in the right way around but we'll find out later I've just put them in loosely for now also on the back I've put a backing plate and I've just simply hot glued all these in place so these don't all wiggle around when I'm trying to put white when I'm trying to connect them up to things and over here you can see the back of the bass volume and tone controls I mean bass volume and treble controls we've got there there's the potentiometers there there's the little preamp board for the tone control also got my magnetic phono preamp in there that I got goodness only knows how long ago the only thing that's left is to put these in these the amplifier modules which I've put new wires on as you can see we've got red for positive black for negative brown is where the speakers come out and uh, right at the front here put a few little wire loops in this one here is where the signal goes in this one here is for all the grounds and I've done the same on the power supply board as you might be able to see if I just get it in the camera there of course if the camera would focus on it you can see we've got a loop of wire here where the grounds are connected another loop wire there where the 15 volt supply is and for the negative and positive 30 volt supplies there's one there and there's one there and of course the uh, 30 volt supplies are for these boards. I've tested that one and that one appears to be working. I'm also in the process of testing the other one which is right here. And for now I've just got it connected up to this um, this little power supply. Only gives out negative and positive 8 volts but it seems to be enough to power the amplifier because when I turn it on and touch the part where the signal goes in do get a buzz out of this speaker I know to some people that might sound a bit weird because they're more used to 60 Hertz whereas over here we've got 50 Hertz but still shows that it's working also been doing some modifications to old Franken PC here as you can see we now have a proper wood front panel and I've replaced the CPU fan which at the moment isn't even turning because got set and um, oh what's it called speed fan running and uh well doesn't even seem to need to have that fan on at the moment and it's running at a stable 32 degrees centigrade i don't know if you can see that which doesn't seem to be much hotter than it was when the fan was running so the thing is the old fan was a little bit too noisy for my liking so i decided to replace it with this one which is much quieter it is a little bit hotter than it was with the fan when the fan was on but you know you can expect that also I've put the hard drive if you can see it if you can make that out I've put the hard drive on a sponge of course made sure the sponge was dry because there was a constant sort of in the background while it was running and it was kind of annoying so Yeah, now there's absolutely no sound from that hard drive at all apart from when it goes <laughs> when it's seeking anyway I'm just gonna have this running for the without the fan turning just to see how hot that gets when it's idle because we're up to about 34 right now I'm just gonna let that run for a few minutes and see what we get and in the meantime I'll get back to working on this it is starting to get a wee bit warm, so I'm just going to go and start that fan up now. If my camera would just zoom out fast enough. There we go. Alright, everything is back together. Well, for the most part, anyway, I haven't connected the volume and tone control to the amplifier boards yet. I just want to give them a little test, make sure that everything in here is behaving. So I'm just going to get the transformer up, make sure these boards have survived me putting them back in there, because one thing I forgot to do was discharge these capacitors. And when I connected this thing up, got a little bit of a spark. 
So I just want to make sure everything survived. Well, would you believe it? I turned this thing on and I made a very, very stupid mistake. Connecting these amplifiers up, I connected positive up to negative and negative up to positive. So I'm having to reverse these wires, connecting that one there and connecting that one there instead. Hopefully I haven't blown anything. Mind you, nothing let out the magic smoke, so um, we could be okay. Amazing. Takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. Right, well, we are all back together now. I haven't wired up the switch yet or put the light in, but I'm happy to say that this is 100% working. I've got it connected up to these speakers right now. So let's just play a little bit of music through it. On the computer here. Yeah. I have to say, that is a really good sound. I mean, this is with the tone controls all in their center position. That sounds really good. It sounds fantastic, actually. There is one little problem that I'm going to have to address, and that is that it's a little bit too sensitive, because... Right now I've got it connected up to the TV's headphone output, though you can't really see what's there, but if I connect it up to anything that's stronger than that, it does distort. Like if I connect it up to my reel-to-reel -reel or my tape deck, we get some distortion regardless of where I have the volume, and I think that's because it's overdriving the uh, preamp for the tone control. So I'm going to put a little attenuator right here, and that should fix that, because I accidentally ordered one too many... Um, 47k lo logarithmic pots potentiometers well, that's kind of a good thing actually because I can put that one in there to attenuate the, um, to make it a little less sensitive and I think that will be that just show what I'm talking about I've got some music in the cassette deck here made completely from sine waves and let's just uh, play that I don't know how clear you can hear that on your end, but there's quite a bit of distortion there. If I turn the output level of the tape recorder down, and then turn the volume up, it's much clearer. Well, here it is all built, as you can see. Got the mains wiring put in now and the switch is wired up. Also got the attenuator for the uh, preamp for the tone control. Anyway, the next thing to do is to put it back where it belongs and wire it, connect it all up and uh, my memory card's just about out now. So that's it for this video and until next time, goodbye. And for those of you asking for schematics, because I know some of you are going to pester me for them anyway, well, here they are. This is the amplifier for the... I mean, this is the schematic for the amplifier. And this is the schematic for the tone control. Hope you can make it out. I lost the original schematic, so I just had to reverse engineer it and draw the schematic. Think I've got everything right, so, um, yeah, there you go.